Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 2, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing more on God's truth about the personal emotional processes relating to forgiving and repenting. The session was recorded on 5th of September 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So I'd like to move on now to the emotional process that I personally engage when I forgive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked a lot about, gosh, this is the conditions under which you have something to forgive. This is how you're going to feel once you've forgiven. Here's some basic principles about what happens. But now I wanted to take the opportunity to get kind of really nitty gritty, like what might it look like and feel like as I go through this process? So what kind of emotional things will I feel? What changes might I go through as I engage and complete the process of forgiveness? All right, well, the reality is I've really been through these processes hundreds of times in hundreds of presentations and and I feel that, you know, we don't need to sort of labour them too much, but we probably need to summarise them. Just for somebody who's new, yeah, um, who yeah. hasn't heard it before. So first, we start off with denial. Yeah. I've got nothing to forgive. Everything's fine in my life. Yeah. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I, I'm not, I don't feel hurt. You know, all this pain and suffering I'm in has got nothing to do with me forgiving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> denial. Right, that's where we start. Yeah. You no. Know? Then some truth hits us of some kind. Now the truth comes to us through many different forms as we've already discussed. Yep, it comes through the law that. of attraction, the core of cause and effect. You know, there's logic, all sorts of education. logic. There's, there's a lot of different things that it come, comes through, the way people we associate with, events we tracked into our life that cause us to see, whoa, I feel something yep. about this and it feels to me like I feel upset yeah. of some kind. So now I've got a beginning awareness. Now what do I do with that? I could engage this awareness more fully by finding out what it is that I feel distressed or hurt about mm -hmm. and find out its cause or I can deny it again. <laughs> right? So usually I cycle in that place, back mm -hmm. and forth between denial and awareness, denial and awareness, denial and awareness, until the events, as we've discussed in previous parts of this presentation, until the events cause an escalation due to our resistance, mm. an escalation of events that makes us hit us in the face and go, you definitely have the problem where you haven't forgiven here and it's definitely affecting your life badly. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so at that point... So, okay, go. Go on. Um, so I suppose what I relate to more is uh, as I've engaged this process in different ways, I haven't necessarily, it hasn't necessarily hit me in the face like, oh, I haven't forgiven, but something hits me in the face and go, oh, hang on, I was harmed something hurt me there that that's not the that hurt or in yeah, that's what the, I'm that talking about thing. that's yeah. what I'm talking about yeah yeah I feel hurt of some kind something was done against me that wasn't well, loving at this or... stage you might not feel something was even done against you you know yeah. that requires further awareness developing mm -hmm. at this this is uh, you're only conscious that initially you're probably only conscious that you actually do hurt <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and wherever it came from <laughs> yeah sometimes you know where it come from sometimes yeah. not yeah at that stage you know yeah but then then you can develop a desire can't you, you the, see a lot now gets down to your choices are you going to choose to follow this down the rabbit hole or are you going to just choose to go back to the original state of denial now as i'm saying a lot of people choose to go back to the original state of denial only to have the thing escalate yeah and now they can't deny it anymore and then you get to the point where you don't even want to deny it anymore yeah well, this is a great place mm -hmm. because once you get to the point where you don't want to deny it anymore now you can really see the hurt that's done and usually attribute it to an event or two or three or five or ten mm -hmm. that occurred in your life that caused this hurt to be there 
and you can now see it and you don't want to deny it anymore. Yeah. You want to be truthful about it. So this is now, now you're in this state emotionally where you want to know the truth about it. You're willing to talk about it. You're willing to, you know, see that something bad has happened. You're willing to face the truth that it was bad. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is an improvement <laughs> from the previous condition of denial. But you still might be quite unwilling to feel about it. Like at that stage, if you're unwilling to feel about it, usually what you do is you get very angry, mm -hmm. resentful, hateful, hurt, you know. You, you have a tendency in that place now to get into this state where you just, you want to hurt the person who did it to you or you want to you yell and scream at them and, and you, and you want to, you know, make them realise things and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I've been through that. And it's not a very pleasant place, mm. you know, and the people around you obviously hate your guts during that place mm -hmm. <laughs> as well, because they think you're upside downing their life as well. You are yeah. harming their life. And while that might not be the case, they've sinned against you. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've got now the right to say they have. Yeah. And taking all this rage out on them is not the answer either. Mm -hmm. Right. Although it can help you recognize the sin. Yeah. So, so it's a necessary part to get angry and not necessarily get angry with them, but to be angry about the fact yeah. that, no, this thing was wrong. Mm. The anger is a layer over the hurt, usually. And, and the anger, it, once you start dealing with the anger, you start recognizing the addictions that have helped you avoid the hurt. Mm. And, and now you're starting to see the addictions and feel the addictions and work your way through the addictions and you can see, wow, you know, the reason why I engage that addiction is just because I don't want to see that that person's hurting me. Mm. You know, I just don't want to see that. I don't want to feel about that. Instead of engaging this addiction, what I'm going to do instead is feel, yeah, you're hurting me, mate. You know, you're hurting me and you're doing something wrong here. You know, now I'm in the state where I'm recognizing the sin. Now I've still got to make further decisions mm -hmm. to actually feel what it felt like to have this sin perpetrated against you. Mm. And that is where we start entering the grieving process. Mm -hmm. We start crying about, you know, what was done to us, feeling, feeling about what was done. Mm -hmm. So, so now I've gone through quite a variety of emotions already, haven't I? I've gone yes. through all so, and and during some of these stages, I might feel things like guilt and shame that I, you know, guilt that I've I've assisted the person damaging me, mm -hmm. shame that you know, and sometimes I wanted them to, mm -hmm. or you know, I, I enabled their behaviour. Mm -hmm. So you might feel those kind of emotions as well. So there's quite a lot of quite, uh, quite difficult emotions to feel through there. And, and also fear about confronting the... Uh, well, let me say by this time, the person we're attempting to forgive is already starting to feel that, that we can see that it was a sin. Yep. So now their attack of us gets heightened. Mm -hmm. They start attacking us further. Yeah wanting to hurt us more they start wanting to you know say that it's wrong what we're going through and all those kind of things mm -hmm. and so and so now we have to have some backbone yeah some conviction to, some conviction that no we have to go through this process to its completion mm -hmm. and so there's a whole heap of things there that are going to go on isn't there where we are afraid of what how they might treat us in the future and afraid of how others who like them mm -hmm. might treat us mm -hmm in the future and so forth, but still sticking to this process. <laughs> so it's basically though, from a, from a, also from a very internal process, I'm going through changes in my belief systems as well, aren't I, of as course. all this is happening. So I'm- Sincere soul-based changes. Yes. To your belief systems. I'm, I'm emotionally recognizing the hurt for the first time. I, and also emotionally choosing to feel it, usually for the first time. Yes, making it an emotional choice to no longer live in it, to either live in the suppression of it or live in the angry uh, punishment of others of it. Yeah. I'm making these sets of choices now that are 
sort of permanent on this issue, aren't I? Yes. Um, once I get out of this denial back and forth thing, if I actually am starting to engage the forgiveness process, there's there's ch definite changes that are happening to me uh, surrounding this issue, which mean I'm mm. never going to I'm never going to uh, want never going to treat the emotion in the same way. Before I even get to the grieving of it, there's certain kind of changes I'm having in relation to the to the issue, isn't there? Well, we've already pointed out. To get to the grieving of it, we've had to go through the denial of it. We've had to go through the process uh, of acceptance. Awareness, 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 acceptance. Acceptance. We've had to go through anger, probably. We've yes. had to go through addictions. We've had to go through our fears. We've had to make choices. We've to had to want make truth. choices and decisions that we've stuck truth. to with yep. with resilience and yep. and consistency. Yeah. Now that's a, that's a lot of progression. It is before we've got to actually the grieving process that releases yes. and actually gives us completed forgiveness. Yes. So, so you can see already there's a huge amount of progression there mm -hmm. that we we need to acknowledge as progression. And and also be willing to engage. I was saying this to someone recently who's saying, "Well, I'm you know I'm writing in my journal. I'm crying about the issue. And I'm saying." There's so much to do before then that you haven't done in terms of acknowledgement of truth, and getting also, out of denial. If, she, if she's crying yeah. before she's done the rest, it, then it's not real, is what I said. Well, it's not only not real; it's just a it's just a tantrum. Yeah, it's not it's not only not real; it's a it's a it's a it's self delusional state yeah. Yeah. to avoid the real, avoid the actual. Yeah, process. and I see a lot of people engaging that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you go through this process as we've described hundreds of times like yes, I've said yes. <laughs> and and this this process ends up with mm -hmm. a, a state where the emotion has left you yeah and it's a painful mm. process of the emotional emotion leaving us there's no way around that there's going to be pain involved mm -hmm. and sometimes it can feel additionally painful given that somebody else did the harm to us that now we're having to release well yes but as we've already pointed out too <laughs> Forgiveness is easier than repentance. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. you know, the reality is we're far better off forgiving than we are not forgiving because not forgiving causes us to engage actions or behaviour that now we're also going to have to yeah. repent for. Yeah. We're going to have to have additional problems to yeah. deal with then. Yeah. So we're far better off forgiving Absolutely. than we are waiting until we've perpetrated a whole heap of other behaviour. Now, it's not always possible, you know, when you look at your life, there are some intense things and you, you initially try to raise them with the people. You try, you try to recover the relationship. The person usually who has uh, harmed you is very resistive to recognising mm -hmm. their harm. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say very resist resistive, very resistive to recognising God's version of it. Yeah. In other words, they want their version of it. Mm. And and here we're not talking about our version of description of harm. No. We're talking about God's version of what is actually harm. And that's what we have to come, that's one of the emotional shifts we have to make, is the full recognition of the harm yep. as God saw the harm. Yeah. Uh, Remember in our introductory session, yeah. we, we said you this. can't forgive something yeah. that didn't actually happen from yes. God's perspective. Yeah. Right. So, so this is a part of this process I'm now seeing Ah, oh, wow, from God's perspective, even though before I was accepting this, yeah. from God's perspective, I should never have accepted mm. it. And it wasn't this bad, what I thought. Sometimes we might find out it was this bad, or sometimes we might find out, you know, I've been telling myself it's this bad, but... When it was this bad. It's actually... Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. And then other times you go, yeah. it's only this bad. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yes. <laughs> and that's yeah. part of this process of forgiveness. We're going to that's go right. through different shifts that expose the truth to us. Well, of course, we're, God's exposing the truth of God's definition to us mm -hmm. here through this process. And so what we often believe is bad is not, and what we often believe is not bad is, yeah. and we're going to have to go through those changes as well as a part of this process. Yeah. So there's many things now that I feel are quite bad, which 20 years ago I thought I didn't even think of, yeah. to be frank, you know, yeah. at all, yeah. as bad or, or good or anything. I didn't yes. even ever thought about them. Yes. Yeah. Now I know them to be, yeah. because the more you go through the process, the more you get told, Mm -hmm. through your connection with God, what is bad and what is good. Yeah. And that's a bit blessing of the process. Yeah. Mm. 
Fantastic. Look, thanks for going through that with us again. Of course, by the end of this process, once we've grieved and released the fear and the pain and the hurt and all of that, we're not going to feel angry or afraid or bitter or no. in relation to these past events, no. the specific ones that we've forgiven. And the reality is if the person was repentant at some point in their future, we'd be happy to talk to them and engage them and so forth. Yeah. And I say if the person was repentant mm -hmm. because it would be quite um, pointless to do it if they're not. Yeah. If they're not repentant, then it's highly likely that you recognising their sin is going to trigger them into more sinful behaviour. Yes, mm. yes, so true. Mm. And then the past hurt no longer affects our actions, emotions, thoughts or intentions. Yeah, now we are acting in our real desires, our pure personality, our, you know, our desires driven by love instead of acting upon past hurt. Yeah. It's a very freeing place. And the more, the more you release, the more you forgive the more freedom you feel, mm. actually. Mm. And uh, and I haven't forgiven completely yet. There's many things I've still got to do to do my process of forgiving. Um, but every new thing I forgive, uh, it's like it doesn't hurt anymore. Even if somebody does the same thing again, yeah, it doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah, It doesn't have an, a, have a effect anymore on me. Yeah, It doesn't change my decisions or affect the outcome of my life anymore mm. yeah, it's a very beautiful place mm. and and that's why i'm very attracted to it mm. 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 yeah it's great mm. and so few people recognize what it's really about the process that's involved uh nor do they recognize just what a fantastic reward it is to actually engage that process exactly yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. That's good. So that's Thank the emotional you. process that's, of forgiveness. That's what we might go through, one or all of those steps. All, all of them. Yeah. It's highly unlikely we won't go through yeah. all of them. And and bearing in mind all of them on different subjects. Yes. Because there might be literally hundreds of subjects which we'll go through those processes on. Yeah. So, so the reason why I have discussed hundreds of times with people that process yes. is because they are going to have to go through the process hundreds of times. <laughs> 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 and that's an important part of the process of forgiveness. Yeah. And if you can go through forgiveness and get to the other end of forgiveness, you will also have this other beautiful effect, and that is you will no longer be causing new events that you have to repent for. Yeah, that's a big... So you're actually helping your own life significantly, firstly by getting rid of past pain, but also no longer causing more pain mm. for yourself or others. Yeah. So let's talk now about why forgiveness often feels unfair. <laughs> so lots of people, when they're confronted with or when they even hear the truth about God's process of forgiveness, often feel it's unfair. And even when they look at worldly concepts of forgiveness, they feel like it can be quite unfair. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'll read the exact question that we've noted down here. Forgiveness seems to be a difficult process for most people for many reasons. Why does forgiveness feel unfair, mm -hmm. especially considering that other people created many of the events which feel painful to us emotionally? Mm. So, Well, the, the question sort of demonstrates it, some of the answer, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it's, it's, it's especially it feels unfair because really... Um, well, yeah, you know, many it. things feel unfair for people and some of them are unfair and some of them are not. But, yeah. but here we need to look at why it feels personally, feels unfair. And if we look at it truthfully and logically, we can see that somebody else perpetrated behaviour, sin, mm -hmm. that was out of harmony with love, that caused harm and damage to myself emotionally and in other ways. So they engaged their free will. They had a choice. They had a choice. And they, they chose, chose to, to harm, harm me. me. And that wasn't my choice. And when you say when they I'm... had a choice, they also had a choice to be aware, even if they were unaware. Yeah. Like, so they even had a choice there. You know, so and to they, know they were harming me. Yeah. So if they were ignorant of the choice, but they mm -hmm. still harmed me, they, they had a choice to not be ignorant. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the yeah. day, it's still a choice. Mm -hmm. So they had a choice and they harmed me. Now, as a result of that harm, I now have emotions that only I 
can release. Mm. Only I can do it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it for me because the emotions are in me. And that's the damage of sin. Mm. The damage of sin is that once an emotion is in you, only you can release it. Yeah. Now, you can get help to release it with God's help and with other people talking to you and helping you and so forth and having a nice environment to do it and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you've got to do the work. Mm. And, and for most people, that feels very unfair. Most people feel the opposite of that. They feel like, if you caused me pain, either I have the right to cause you the same amount of pain as you caused me, mm -hmm. or if you cause me pain, I shouldn't have to feel about it, you should have to feel about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but that is, a, you know, unfortunately, not logical based on the truth about the soul. And this is why it doesn't work. Yeah. The reason why the world today isn't working is because everyone perpetrates that set of false beliefs mm -hmm. that either I have the right to repay what you did to me in kind, yeah. or I at least have the right to not feel about it. Yeah. These two things are causing a huge amount of damage on the planet. Mm. And so therefore, they're not logical to keep on engaging. Yeah. Right, but for the majority of us, we want to keep on engaging those things. Yeah, we don't want to do the right thing. Mm. We want to do what our rage or our anger or our fear or whatever other emotion we have that's out of harmony with love dictates to us to do. And <clears throat> and sometimes, I think it seems on earth that the people who do the harm, it can feel like they do it with impunity, that they do it without without consequence and often it can feel unfair to have seemingly if i want to live god's way i have to forgive these people who don't seem to be paying any compensatory effects we know that that's not true but i think a lot of people view forgiveness as unfair for that reason yeah i think we need to discuss the flaws with yes. this kind of thinking which is what we've got down next to discuss but <clears throat> the reality is we have a lot of flaws in our belief systems yep. that cause us to believe that forgiveness is not a good thing. Yes. In fact, we often have a preference for resentfulness, hatred, mm -hmm. and other emotions similar of a similar nature rather than a preference to forgive. So let's talk about the logic mm -hmm. then. The, the, um, the flaws in the logic, shall we the say? The flaws in the logic. So yep. the first thing is that I want the other person, for example, I want the other person who harmed me to have to feel these emotions. Now, that's never going to work out, is it? Because only I can feel my emotions. Well, it's interesting. We need to clarify a little here in that if a person harmed me, they are not only going to have to feel the harm they did to me, so they're going to have to feel the same emotions that I'm going to have to feel. Mm. But they're also going to have to feel all of their emotions about it as well and all of the emotions associated with why they did it. Yes. So they're going to have quite a lot of emotion to feel. So God's laws are actually <clears throat> ensuring that they do actually have to feel quite a lot more than me in this case. Of course. Yeah. But the problem is they cannot feel my emotions. Only I can feel my emotions. No one else can release my emotions for me. Mm. So the flaw is by wanting you to feel my emotions. I'm actually saying that you are capable of feeling my emotions and you're not. Yeah. And there's the flaw. Only, the only person capable of feeling my emotions is me. Mm -hmm. So there's a big flaw yeah. in the whole concept of having somebody else share or feel all of your emotions because they can't. Yeah. It, it's a standalone process. If the emotions in me, I have to feel them. And so what about people, I'm just thinking now, people think that's unfair. Like, wow, I was a kid, that entered me. I had no control over it. Now I have to feel it. God's designed it that way. It hurts and I didn't make any choices to create this hurt. That Where's the justice in that? Uh, God ensures there's a lot of justice uh, through the whole process. You'll yep. be compensated for the fact that somebody else damaged you. Yep. You will be. Yeah. And and whether it's now or in the future, God always compensates the people who have damaged, being damaged by others. Mm -hmm. 
you will also be, uh, God will also reward you for engaging the process of forgiveness. Mm. So there are specific rewards that don't come if you didn't do it, mm -hmm. but if do come if you do. Mm -hmm. So God rewards the process of forgiveness besides the rewards that come naturally as a part of the process, which are that you're no longer governed by the hurt that have been perpetrated towards you. Yes. There are also other rewards. The people who progress the fastest in any form of life spirit or earth are those people who have forgiven mm. and the reason why is because it frees you to have a new way of believing a new logic a new way of seeing things and this naturally speeds up your life and in, in, in enjoyment mm. so there are many many rewards all of which are compensatory rewards for the process of forgiving in addition god knows that you are to blame for the emotion and god's willing to help you release the emotion He's willing to take the emotion from you, in fact, but you have to be willing to let it go. Mm. So that's all God's requiring of you is to let it go, to, to release it emotionally, to go through the process of releasing it emotionally. And he's not going to, he's going to do that in the most rapid way possible if you are desirous of forgiveness. But it's going to be the very slow and laborious process if you're not. <laughs> And is it fair to say that um, if God did it any other way, God would be removing us from the ultimate potential of our soul to be a sensitive, feeling, experiencing being? Yes, like, if, we, if we look at the problem of not feeling emotion. And if God said, okay, well, someone did it to you so you don't have to feel about it wouldn't that then take me away from my sensitivity my uh yeah but let, let's look yeah. at the process of not feeling emotion yeah it's a it's a process that involves all of humanity there's not one person on the planet who who is uh you know free of this impediment that is to to attempt to not feel emotion you know yeah. everyone on the planet as an adult generally wants to not feel emotion. Well, who doesn't? It, it's, a, it's a pandemic, an epidemic yes. of the greatest proportions yes. is to not feel emotion. Yes. So no, not one person can be blamed for your choice to not feel emotion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't follow the logic about blaming someone for my choice, how that relates. Yes, your choice to, to not feel emotion yeah. is your choice to not feel emotion. Yeah. And not one person oh, on the planet can be blamed for not that. Not a single person. Not a single person. There's multiple causes for it. Is There's what thousands saying. of yes. causes. Yes. I Societal, yeah. parental, and so forth. Yeah. Thousands of causes for you to choose to not feel emotion. God designed you to feel emotion. The yeah. child, without all of these other effects, would feel emotion. So you could almost say that our choice to not forgive is partially based around the fact that all of society has chosen to not feel. Mm -hmm. Because if all of society had chosen to feel, any child who was harmed would immediately release its harm and therefore have nothing to forgive. Yes. So it therefore follows that really all of us need to learn that feeling emotions is a very important thing. Mm. And all of us need to learn the consequences of not feeling emotion. Mm. Now, no single person should be absolved of that. No, and, and if we did even attempt, if we did attempt to absolve, and if God attempted to absolve us from that, wouldn't we be punishing ourselves because we would be removing ourselves from the feeling process, which is the design of our soul in order to experience life? Yeah, well, we are, too high we are in reality punishing ourselves whenever we don't feel emotion. But, but... The majority of people think that's a good thing. Yeah, right. I guess so, I was talking about God's justice in, in well, requiring no, I'm talking us more to globally feel. about God's justice than you are. I see. What I'm saying is no one person is actually responsible for the suppression of emotion. Point. Yeah. So if no one person is responsible, then I am also partially responsible for the suppression of my own emotion. Yes. Right? Now, if I'm partially responsible for the suppression of my own emotion, it makes sense that I must learn to no longer suppress it. Totally. 
And if I had no longer suppressed it, I would also have nothing to forgive because I would have already gone through all of the forgiveness because once I'd opened emotionally, the, all, gone. Yeah. all the forgiveness emotions would have all just flowed naturally. Yeah. So we can't say that it's unjust of God to expect us all to have to feel emotion. Yes, I, I agree. We can't. Yeah. And to state that it is, is a lack of logic. Mm. Uh, it's not unjust. Mm. It, it's an act of justice that God requires all of humanity to eventually feel emotion. Yeah. So that's a good thing, yeah. not a bad thing. The fact that I choose to avoid God's requirement mm -hmm. of feeling emotion and the design of my soul is in the end perpetration of, of an unloving act towards myself for which I need to be repentant. Mm. And God won't forgive me for it. He needs to, he is asking me to be repentant for it. He designed me mm. to feel and I'm choosing not to. Yes. So it's Sorry. not God's fault. No, yeah. That you... I was designed to feel. It's it's my fault. I desire I'm trying to not feel. Mm. Mm. Yeah. If I had accepted my design and if all of humanity had accepted our design and therefore no longer trying to prevent emotion, none of humanity would have anything to forgive. That's right. Because we would have all have felt our emotion at the time that it was caused rather than storing it for later on. <laughs> so, yes. so, yes, it's very important that uh, we can see that God doesn't remove us from, from emotions for very many reasons. Yeah. And many of these reasons are learning lessons mm -hmm. that will help us greatly in our future. And also emotions are a key to desire. And unless we learn how to feel emotions, we're never going to have desires. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that we also understand that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and when we become resentful ourselves or vengeful mm -hmm. or hateful, we're actually now in a choice ourselves yes. to do harm. And that so we're that making an moved, active choice. We've moved out of the realm of just resisting forgiveness. Of course. Um, or, or through our resistance to forgiveness, we're now in the, the realm of sinning against other people. Yes. And so there's a problem with us feeling... What we're basically doing is we're choosing to not feel our own emotions yep. and instead take out all of our hurt on other people and frequently the people we're taking it out on are not the people who harmed us because we're too, yeah. we're too afraid to take it out on them. Yes. So what we do instead is we take it out on a bunch of people who didn't harm us. Yes. How unjust is that? Very unjust. At least if we took it out on the people who harmed us, that would be more just. Yeah. Right? If we're angry with the person who harmed us, that's more just than being angry with people who never harmed us at all. Yes. Right? So you can see straight away that if you avoid the process, right, and, and this is what we're talking about here. No, like, we're talking about what feels unfair. Well, we're, no, we're talking specifically about the flawed logic as yeah. <laughs> to so why it feels unfair. You can see that our flawed logic often is I have the right to attack a whole heap of people who never did anything to me yeah. because I feel hurt about this other person who I won't touch because I'm too afraid to, who did actually harm me. That's pretty flawed logic, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. So could we say in summary then, because mm -hmm. basically God's laws are attempting to help me release the emotion, emotional damage done to me at all times. Yeah, yeah. So the reason, in summary, really, the reason that forgiveness can feel unfair is just because I resist my own emotional process. Well, no, the truth is more, you could say it more truthfully. The reason why I feel forgiveness is unfair is because I do not have God's definition of love. Mm. Simple. Mm -hmm. If I believe forgiveness is unfair, there is something wrong from God's perspective, there is something wrong with my definition of love. Mm, excellent. And that could be that I refuse to feel my own emotions, but it, and it could be that I desire to take out stuff on other people, whatever it is. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I, my definition of love is flawed. Yes. Simple. Simple. And, and so if you feel like you, you refuse, and you can feel, if you're honest with yourself, you can feel a refusal to forgive. If you feel a refusal to forgive, no, straight away. 
my definition of love is flawed. Mm -hmm. God's love is different to mine. Yeah. And what I need to do is learn what God's love is. Yes. Yep. Yes. And not hold on to my own definition of love. Mm -hmm. mm. So now I'd like to talk to you about why forgiveness is a personal experience. Well, if we think for a moment, as we've discussed in many previous occasions, the soul is just this container of emotion. It contains other things too, of course, personality, desires and other things, intentions, but it's a container of emotions. Now, being a container of emotions, and I am a being which, which, which involves a container of emotions, it makes sense that if I'm going to have to release emotions, they're going to have to be my emotions, <laughs> my personal experience of release. Yes. N nobody else can do that for me. That's right. It's a personal individual process. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the hurt I have received is specific to me. Mm -hmm. It was perpetrated towards me and it's my emotional response to the hurt that I've received that needs to be released. All of those things are individual personal things. Nobody else can understand them really even, let alone feel them. Mm. So it's going to be a personal emotional experience. Interestingly, what I see is most people trying to make it a joint emotional experience. Yeah. They try to have someone share it, like, whether it's a partner or a family member or a confidant or a counsellor or a counsellor or, or support group or whatever. Or the person who harmed them. Or the person who harms them even, yeah. yeah. They try to involve them in the process too. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. It's a personal emotional process. It's going to have to be felt personally. And you're only going to feel something personally fully if you do it alone. You, you can't join other people to it. Mm -hmm. they, they need to have their process and you need to have your process. And that's really, there's laws and the design of the soul that are governing the fact that it must be personal. Yes. It's, the emotion is stored within me. The emotion has to release me personally. It's all a very personal experience. The only other person who can be involved is God. Yeah, the, uh, the other half of your soul is involved mm -hmm. in some ways. But, but even then, it's interesting because the law is, is about your half of the soul even. So the reality is I will have a completely different experience to the other half of my soul, you. Yeah with regard to what I need to forgive and what I need to repent for. But here we're talking primarily about forgiveness. What I'm not going to have to forgive is going to be very unique to me, my experience. Because while we're not in a unified state, your experience is still is separate. separate from mine. Emotionally separate yep. from yours. Now, as we slowly get together more clearly and, and there's more and more, obviously we're having a joint experience. Mm -hmm. And then anything that's perpetrated toward us is now more of a joint experience, but it's still an individual experience of the soul. Mm -hmm. It's still something we're going to have to do individually, release. And in fact, I need to learn how to let emotion flow in my half of the soul before I can f let your emotion, the other half of me, flow in my half of the soul. Yeah. And if I am shutting down emotion in my half of the soul from flowing, then I'm automatically shutting down you from projecting emotion at me. I mean, in other words, I'm automatically stopping your emotion from flowing into me. Yes. And if I'm protecting myself and not sharing my emotion with others, I'm automatically stopping emotion flowing from me into you. Mm -hmm. And the way the soul joins is by an emotional flow between the two halves. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually harming my own soul yeah. if I refuse to forgive. Right? And this is where, why forgiveness is such a personal process. I have to personally go through this process of opening all of my emotions to the outside world. To the outside world or yes. to myself first? No, to everything. I, I don't understand what you mean to the outside world. I've got to allow all of my emotions to flow in any direction. And what I mean by that is I've got to allow my emotions to flow to you. I've got to allow your emotions to flow to me. I've got to allow my emotions to flow to Tim, Jack, Joe Blow down the road who hates my guts. And I've got to allow his emotions to flow to me. So, and, and I've got to allow God's emotions to flow 
and my emotions to flow for God. Mm -hmm. If I do all of those things and I've forgiven, none of the negative emotions will ever affect me and only will I feel the positive ones. So if I say there's someone who's harmed me mm -hmm. and during that during that process of forgiveness mm -hmm. i must open up to the harm the hurt that was created in that in that event that mm -hmm. i didn't feel about i need mm -hmm. to unlock that so it flows now that's right and then what kind of emotions would i let flow to the person who harmed me well you have a feeling of forgiveness of them yes which is a feeling, so a, feeling of love feeling. for them and concern yeah. for them and concern yeah. for their welfare and yeah things like this you will you will yes. because you'd want to help them even yes. you you'll have all sorts of emotions that will flow to them and you'll feel the emotions flowing from them but the emotions that you've released now that they were before hurting you with no longer will resonate in you mm. so that means any hurtful thing they try to project at you instead of you reacting violently or negatively to it mm. there is no reaction at all mm. So it passes through you and goes out the other side, and you could say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess why I asked for the clarity is because uh, from my perspective, so much of my personal work is about uh, having my emotions for myself and not taking on other people's emotions as my own. It's yeah. a, this flow yeah, but, of emotion thing. But once you release the reason why you take on other people's emotions as your own, you will still be able to feel their emotions, but you won't take them on as your own anymore. Yes. So that's about releasing the reason why you take them on as your own. Yes, yes. No, I understand that. I just meant when you were saying flowing in and flowing out, I just wanted to clarify yeah, no, like, no, the difference yeah, between those two states. But it's important to say that, yeah. but that it's only the emotional, the only reason why we're so worried about other people's emotions is because we have something going on in inside of ourselves that we're yet to release about other people's emotions. Certainly, my my feeling that I must take on their emotions and dismiss my own, that's a, that's a problem in myself. Well, two problems. It's two problems, yes. One is that I, I must take, take on, on. And the other that I dismiss my and own. And act upon. Yeah. And the second one is I must dismiss my own. Yes. Two problems. Yeah. And, and those two problems, once healed, once forgiven, because they were created in me. Yes, yes. by somebody else. Once yeah. forgiven, you will no longer do it. Yeah. You'll recognise, oh, AJ's got some emotions. Yeah. And I don't have to listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I can, can let them flow. What you're saying is the, d the distinction well, is... When you feel them, they flow. Yes, I can, you. I can feel them flow and not have a problem, or not have a... Reaction. A negative injury-based response to them. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, cool. Just you can feel them being anything. projected yeah. at you, you absorb them, but you don't, you don't feel bad about them. Mm. Uh, they're so, sort of, you could say in a way they're transformed. The forgiveness that you've gone through has transformed them now. And now you recognise, oh, that person's sinning, but... Yeah, it's and, not impacting on me. Well, it may be. It may even impact on you. You know, they may be sinning by bashing you in the face. That's certainly going to impact I on see. you. Mm. But you would still be able to forgive them and you won't react or retaliate in kind. Yeah. Because, because you have no emotional reason inside of you to do so. Yes. You don't feel... You drawn know, to. You don't feel like, you know, just because they're hitting you, you don't feel like you're bad now. You know they're bad. Not you. Yeah. You know they're the one that's hitting you, so they're the one who's being bad. Yes. You know that. You don't have to react to it yeah. anymore because you don't feel like reacting to it anymore. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of uh, positive uh, reasons for why it's a personal emotional experience, mm -hmm. and it has to be. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to understand emotion. He does. He wants us to understand that we need to stand alone with emotion. And what I mean by that is that we need to get to the point where we deal with and cope with and enjoy all of our own emotion. Mm. He, he is trying to educate us to that fact. Mm -hmm. And the going through the forgiveness process will help us greatly to come to that conclusion. That, that what's, that's what God's trying to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So even though, even though the others have caused the emotional damage within us, 
Forgiveness must be a personal process because only we are in charge of our emotions and yep. no one else can experience them or let them go. No. And no one else can share in the letting go. No one else no. can really do much apart from give us truth and yeah. not oppose us yeah. in that process, which is huge. But it's, well, Of course, you yeah. know, like, so some group therapies might be helpful or some yeah. individual therapy might be or helpful. Even and, or even counselling. Or even counselling might be helpful. None of these things are, are unhelpful. Yeah. But if we rely on them to share in our process, now they're unhelpful. Yes. Because we're not uh, seeing the truth, and that is only we yes. can take responsibility for and feel our own emotion. Yeah. It's a yeah. personal process. Nobody else can do it for me. Yes. Mm. And this means that forgiveness is a very personal process mm -hmm. that requires us to be soft to. And sensitive. And sensitive to all of what's within us, all of the emotions within us. Yes. And eventually sensitive to all the emotions in everyone else. Everyone else, which is what you were saying earlier. Yeah. yeah. And also sensitive to what God views as sin. Yes. So now I'm heightened. I've got a heightened sensitivity to sin. The more, more sensitive I am to sin, the less likely I am to engage it. Mm. Mm. So that's a good thing. So God can actually become involved in this process, mm -hmm. and we'll, we've got a whole session on that down we've the track. Got a couple of sessions, yeah. or maybe even more on that. But just quickly, mm -hmm. God can help us to remove emotions if we have personally made the choice to feel the emotions. Yes. And God can make this process very quick for us. Mm -hmm. But most of our pain is associated with the fact that we actually want to slow down the process as much as possible. Yes. And there's reasons we want to slow it down. We've already talked so, about resistance, haven't we? And we have. Resistance is all about trying to slow down or stop yes. the process of releasing hurt. Yes. But we don't understand. If we're doing this, we're just harming ourselves. Yeah. That's all we're harming. Yeah. We're now harming our future life. And we're not so just harming ourselves. That's one of the harms. Mm. Obviously, we're also harming Others, everyone around yeah. us who we now act in a way unlovingly towards yeah. because we've refused to feel. Yes. Right. So, so there's a terrible amount of harm that we are now perpetrating mm. because we've chosen to resist feeling. Yes. So we want to avoid our, our own painful emotional experience. We want the perpetrator to pay for what they've done. Yeah, well, we've and talked about all of the reasons, haven't we, like why we do this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I just get in trouble for skipping over no, parts no, of the right. notes that's sometimes. Right. <laughs> but we have talked about th those were all reasons, weren't they, that w yep. why we, why we uh, don't want to do it. You yes. Know? And, yeah, all of those reasons yeah. are all, you know, they're all part of the problem. Yeah. They are. Um, but in the end, we're going to have to give up all them too. Yes. And that's a personal process too. All the false yeah. beliefs we have, all the other things we have that we've discussed many times now, all the things that we have now that are associated with these systems that we've got going on inside of ourselves that are emotional, they're all going to have to be given up at some point. And in the end, I need to end up with God's definition of love. Mm -hmm. And and if I if I don't forgive, I'll never have it. Mm. Never. So yeah, there's so many things we have to do. Is there more that are in the list that you wanted to mention? <laughs> no, I, I honestly think we've completely covered the resistances. Yeah. But I just I just know that, you know, sometimes we look back on, oh, we could have raised that point. But I think we've, we've it's just repetition in our notes here. Yeah, what we want to do now is, is see that, yes, the, the main thing to take from this personal experience discussion is this. Only I can go through the emotional experience. Any time I expect someone else, God, or my partner, or my children, or my friends, or my counsellor, or my support group, or AA, or somebody else to go through the experience with me, I am now being unloving. Mm. And I'm not actually going to achieve forgiveness because... No. It has to be a personal process where I engage it yeah. for myself fully, fully willing for myself to feel the pain by myself. Yeah. And great if I want to involve God because God is going to speed that up. He's going but to help me, but of, I'm going to have to be still willing. All of my resistance is going to prevent God helping me. Correct. Yeah. 
Now it's important to note, uh, in the summary to this, that all of those people I previously mentioned can help me. Yes. But they don't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's not their job. Mm -hmm. They can, if they decide to give the gift of their love, help me, but they may not. And they can only help me by assisting me to reach this point of fully being willing to feel for myself. And that's, that's a massive help. If someone can help you to get to that point. Yeah, but you can't expect them to get you no. to that point. And this is where I see a lot of failure when it comes to addressing emotional issues. People have very, very high expectations that somebody else helps them. Hmm. When actually God is saying to us, no, I'm sorry, mate. I'm here to help you. Nobody else has to. And you've got to do this process yourself. It's a personal process. Yeah. And unless you're willing to do this process yourself as a personal process, you're being out of line now. You're mm. being unloving with other people for which you will have to repent yeah. later. Yeah. There are many emotional reasons why we expect other people to help us, all of which are out of harmony with God's definition of love. Mm. Any expectation we have for one other person or any other person to help us is out of harmony with God's love. So we're already out of line. And this, remember, learning, going through the process of forgiveness is all about coming to a part, you know, about coming to understand love, coming mm -hmm. to understand God's definition of love. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be very, very careful that any help we engage because people want to give it doesn't become a demand on our part that they continue doing so. Yes, absolutely. And this is a part of us owning, taking personal responsibility for our own process. Mm. Yep. Mm. Very good. Okay. Okay, so that finishes off, I think, with the, the forgiveness. The personal process of forgiveness. The personal process of forgiveness. Yes. Mm. Good. <laughs>